Hey guys, once again, welcome back to The Layout. My name is Josh. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a how-to video. I'm gonna show you how my dad and I are gonna be installing some backdrops onto the layout here. So we're over here on the lower level. Things are a little messy just because we moved all the buildings that were previously there in the backdrop so that we can go ahead and access the backboard here and then put our photos up. A couple other quick things to mention real quick. If you're doing backdrops and don't have a layout yet, I would highly recommend doing them before you put the scenery on. The reason for that is because a lot of times they come rolled up in a piece of paper that's maybe two feet high by maybe 10 feet long. And it's a lot easier to just roll that piece of paper out all the way along. For us, however, since we have this track and stuff in the way here, we're gonna have to roll it out and put it into the corner once with the glue already applied and stick it up like that. So there's no huge issues with that. It just is a little bit easier to make mistakes. You just gotta be a little bit more careful. But that being said, you can definitely still do it. So anyways, that being said, uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and take a look at the backdrop itself for this piece right here. We've cleared out as much of the scenery as we can in front. We're gonna go ahead and apply the glue, stick it on, and it's pretty much as easy as that. So it's super easy to put it up. I'll talk you through it, show you how we do it, and then we'll take a look at the end result here as soon as we're finished. So here's our backdrop. We are using backdrops from Trackside Scenery. Um, this isn't sponsored by them in any way. We've tried a couple different backdrops from Walther's and things we've found at hobby shows, uh, model train shows, but um, this is really just the best quality backdrops we've been able to find, um, and they're also a pretty decent price. So I'll go ahead and put a link to the website down there in the description of this video if you guys are interested in checking them out. But um, anyways, we looked, and he has all sorts of, you know, this company has all sorts of different types of backgrounds. So if you want to fall, you know, colored background, so it's got all the different, you know, colored trees and leaves, you can do that. They have all sorts of desert, city scenes, really anything you can think of. I think with the exception of snow, um, they pretty much have it. So that's what we went ahead and did here. Um, you can see this is just protective paper in the backdrop itself. This is actually this piece of paper right here. It's all photorealistic, so you can see the quality no matter how far you zoom in um, is really great. So it's going to look really great behind the layout. And an engine is going to be about that tall, so the, tre the trees are a realistic height. Um, and on this particular backdrop, we actually have um, the sky, but what we've been doing is cutting that out because it didn't quite fit. If you remember back in the layout there, we have all the support columns coming down, and it just would have been too difficult to try to splice those into the backdrop. So we figured just, you know, have the minimum amount of sky and then we'll cut that out and just put the mountains in behind the already painted blue backboard. Um, and one nice thing about this company is that the gentleman who owns it is willing to work with you um, and totally customize it. So if you want a building placed in the background, he'll actually put a photorealistic building there or if you want a road or if you want the valley to come down. It's very flexible, very easy to make it fit for what you want into your own specific layout. So anyways, the backdrops that we're using here is the Shenandoah Valley series. I believe that's what it is. And um, again, you can be able, you can find that on the website. But um, we have several of these. The nice thing is, you know, the repeating section is pretty far apart. So it doesn't look like you have the same background every three or four feet. Um, and then you also have the different, you know, distances of trees. So you have this tree group in the foreground here, and then you have lots of different mountains there in the background. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just take an X-Acto knife. We'll do this on top of a piece of plywood or something. We'll cut out the outline of the mountains there, cut out the sky, and then I'll show you how we apply the glue and get this thing put up onto the backboard of the layout. One other thing I wanted to mention real quick before you put the backdrops up is to make sure that you have a very smooth background, because if you have anything underneath the photo here, you'll really be able to see that bump which will be exaggerated if it's underneath the photo there. All right, so we're bringing over the uh, backdrop here. Uh, the most important thing when you're lining up several backdrop pieces is to make sure that the ends match up. So over there on the foreground there in the close end is the part that we're gonna make sure it lines up the best. And then again, you just wanna start from the bottom, make sure that things line up there, and then kind of go from there.
So one thing you might notice here is that if you look up at the top, we've got the bottom all lined up perfectly here, very straight along the, the corner of the back board and the base here. But if you look up here, you're no, you'll notice that these overlap the top of the backdrop just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is take an X-Acto knife and come around here. And we're just gonna cut along the support beam there so that that will lay flat. And then kind of trim around the edges and we're still debating whether to paint you know, the bottom of the support brown to match the backdrop or just to leave it for us. Um, we're trying to decide what's best there. So anyways, you can see we're taking a brand new X-Acto knife, cutting along the edges there, and then cutting out that piece as well. And you can also see there's a little bit of a white line where the two backdrops meet there. That's something that we'll go ahead and work on pressing down and making sure that that white line is almost invisible, which you'll be able to tell if you come over here you can see that there was uh, two different ones that met in the back right there. You can't see that white line. And then over here, I actually don't even know where it is, right here. You can see there's a, the two backdrops come together, but you can barely see it, especially once you stand back. So once we get everything pressed in and laid flat, you'll barely be able to see the transition there between the two different pieces. Um, another thing we have on hand here is a roller. This is really helpful for just, you can see it's a nice foam brush here. It's really helpful for just rolling it making sure that you get all of the air bubbles out and making sure that it's pressed flat against the backdrop there. Another thing you can do is uh, use a plastic squeegee for just, again, if you do it nice and light, um, making sure that all of the air bubbles are out and then it's laying flat against the backboard. Anyways guys, we'll go ahead and finish this up. We will uh, be back here in just a moment once we get the buildings back in place. And then I'll show you a good before and after video here to show you what the backdrops look like once they're in place. And um, a couple of closing thoughts. Mm -hmm.